もうまず僕の描く漫画みたいな人だと思ったからもう直感的にルフィだって思った君以外想像できない今のところ。So I found this interesting article about the contract negotiations with the creator of One Piece, Echo Oda, and Netflix, and some of the stipulations he put into play that is serving to protect this franchise from any meddling from the showrunners, directors that want to change the source material. I think it's an interesting piece where a lawyer is discussing some of some previous contracts with anime adaptations like Cowboy Bebop, Death Note, where there's always a, an ability、uh, left in the contract to. Alter some of the sor- original source material, storylines or concepts or anything in general related to it. And it's funny to see that with One Piece,、uh, the Netflix adaptation, that wasn't the case. You had Echo Oda there all the time, approving every scene, making adjustments, rewrites, and asking films to be wholesale rewritten and reshot, spending millions of dollars, and they had to do it. And I think that is crazy. It seems like Echo Oda has some sort of version of Final Cut on. One piece of the live action adaptation. I think it's serving the show well, where all the fans that love One Piece are identifying, even with some of the changes they made here and there. You still have the the pure essence of the source material materialize within the the product, within every scene that you watch it, and it doesn't seem like it's an off brand version that's been manipulated by Hollywood standards or ideologies or anything like that. And I think that's what we love about One Piece. That's why it's garnering such a large fan base beyond. On the the typical anime nerd or anyone else that knows the manga, and it's crazy to see how this contract differs, and it makes sense why Ichiro Oda would would get that different contract because he's this is the biggest manga in the world. He has the biggest anime in the world under his grips, and Netflix has to bend over backwards if they want to get control of it, and they probably couldn't get control of it. That's why they relented to Ichiro Oda's demands for complete control over this. This overall adaptation and any altering and changes have to go through him. So I love that. Just this is a change in Hollywood because as we saw with Cowboy Bebop, the original creator didn't want to have anything to do with that since they could change anything at will. They don't have to listen to him.、It、was in his contract. And I think that is the big difference there. I think with this article, we're talking to one of the lawyers that worked on the Cowboy Bebop contract, so he is probably addressing some of the difference there where they could do anything. The Cowboy Bebop, and, and we saw that with the the Netflix adaptation, where they changed different parts, they changed characterizations, they remodeled the the entire storyline to fit、uh, a more of a progressive Southern California political feel, and I think that is not the case here. Even though they do make some adjustments with One Piece, it, it's not felt as something that's out of this world and Southern California style,、uh, I guess, politicking. This feels more、uh, realistic to the. Story and the source material itself, and I think that is why people love it. And of course, we have scenes that people were wanting to see in the anime actually being in this live action version.、And、I think that is the critical part of this. It's just this is a purely Ichiro Oda's ideal, and I think we see that with the overall development of this project, and we see it just with the passion that the directors and showrunners are putting forth towards it, and where I think they even feel. That、uh, energy from Etro Oda himself, and I think that is、uh, the critical thing that is making this、uh, such a successful project. But、uh, let's read the article. I'll give you my thoughts on it, and、uh, let's see how they this whole contract unfolded. Netflix One Piece contract writer: Most Hollywood contracts let them alter content from the source, and that's a direct quote. I think from、uh, the lawyer they're speaking to. The alleged contract writer for Netflix One Piece series revealed that most Hollywood contracts supposedly contain a clause that allow them to alter the original work as they see fit. If such a thing is the case, it would explain why a lot of Hollywood produced adaptations are low quality and used as a vehicle for political statements, as opposed to sticking to the source material, such as the case with Cowboy Bebop live action series, and you can add Death Note to that as well. Fukuya Kinsaku, a lawyer in Japan and New York. Brought up the matter by replying to an individual wanting Hollywood to more closely follow the original creators. 
as such an unheard of idea led to many liking one piece live action and that is the case people love it for following the source material at least the anime fans and i think it brought a whole bunch of new fans because it did follow the source material because the source material is what led to the success of one piece why change it and i think it's the same with cowboy bebop and death note why are you changing the source material that's why it's popular that's why people want to see a live action version and i think hollywood doesn't care about that they just still have their own ideals and they just force feed it to the audience nowadays instead of trying to please the audience and i think that is a grave mistake that we constantly see in Hollywood consistently and I think that's why people were cheering for this uh, writer's strike because people hate the writers now because they expect them to, to produce a drivel that is not as interesting and engaging as they usually were in the, at least in the past decade or so and I think that is something we're still seeing and right after the writer's strike ended we're hearing about an office reboot and people are nonplussed and they almost deflated the energy of the, the contract negotiations of the writer strike ending people are like what you're just getting back to doing reboots and maybe forcing your modern day political ideas into the office as well that's just some things that people are not looking forward to let's read what the the contract writer says happen to notice this i was in charge of the one piece contract so i can't comment but since it's an important matter i'll, I'll write about it everything depends on the contract almost 100 percent of hollywood type contracts contain a clause stating that they are at liberty to alter the original content that the author's personal rights cannot be exercised and it doesn't end with just this Kensako elaborated further close communication is of course important but the point is to be able to include conditions called quality control making available the setting design script drafts at every stage as well as guaranteeing meaningful discussions regarding comments there are more easily accepted methods such as designating key factors and requiring approval from the original author for changes. And I guess this is some of the details they may have added for Icho Oda's contract in, a, in accordance with the, the One Piece uh, Netflix adaptation. The lawyer concluded, after experiencing not being supported by the fans due to such film adaptations that denied the worldview of the original works, there was now more room for negotiation to sell those conditions. It's not necessarily impossible unless the original work is strong, but please give the challenge a try. Of course, it is not my intent at all to deny ventures and developments in film production. And of course, the live action One Piece series did make some minor race swap changes. But I think those were approved by Oda himself because they were just minor changes that it didn't at all get in the way of the characters themselves. Those characters being changed like uh, Nami's sister, but she was still the same Nami's sister if you, you re if you remember the the manga and anime. So it did it didn't feel like anything that was artificial forced down our throats like some of these other productions from Netflix or just Hollywood in general where it just feels like you're at a political campaign hearing a, a speech about a topic that you just don't care about when you're here to see pirates talking to a snail phone and using their stretchy powers in the open sea so i'm glad they itro oda kind of exercised his his credibility his strength his power and secured these rights in a way where he can overturn or just overrule some of the production the directors showrunners even executive producers about any ideas they may have in altering one piece and it has protected the franchise well enough up to this point that it's getting multiple seasons and i think it proved to netflix and tomorrow studios that this is the way of producing this content and i think another thing i think etro oda seems to have a good eye for what is appealing even for the live action audience because what changes that he allowed to happen were good and they were right and it made sense and i think he may have a, a good i guess talent for uh, the production of uh, anime live adaptations but uh, you tell me what do you think uh, about this contract uh, change that is shattering uh, the standards in hollywood nowadays actually giving power to the original creator to not allow producers to overturn and alter his creative vision i think obviously we all want that but it's something that rarely happens in hollywood but it happened with itro oda because he's one of the most powerful for creators in japan so do you think it will happen to other creators i'm not too sure about that hollywood likes to have control over these projects i think this is just a special circumstance that will not be replicated by any other production but i don't know you tell me leave a comment like share and subscribe this is wagner knows why catch you next time